Let me say this coming out of the shoot. My name is Alex Haversham, and this is a call to action. But that's not so important right now. What is important is this topic that we are going to discuss today. And those of you who are listening or watching this, I don't want you to uh, be too personal with this information because we want you to share it. Because it embraces one of the most important activities, elements of God-given rights that we have in this great country of ours, that's voting and the right to vote. And uh, I've just finished a conversation with uh, my guests on the show. I'm going to call them co-hosts because they're going to do more talking than I'm going to do in the person of Miss uh, Janetta Watson who's the director, that might not be her exact title, but as long as you, we know she's in charge, that's all we need to worry about, of the Board of Elections of Macon and Bibb County. And accompanying her today is Mr. Darius Maynard. I'm sorry, Darius D. Maynard, whatever <laughs> he stands for. <laughs> who's also uh, the president. That might not be his right title, but he holds an important position <laughs> for the uh, Board of Election. And in all seriousness, this is a very, very important topic because this is a miracle, you know, and you know, a whole lot of people died and fought and sweated, blood and tears for the right to vote. And let me just say this coming out of the shoot, we need to exercise that right. And the purpose of this conversation is to empower you or provide you with information uh, in spite of new legislation that we're gonna talk about. So you will exercise that right. Now, whatever it takes, whatever it takes, you know, we need to be committed to voting, irrespective of who you're going to vote for, the party, what have you. Our concern is that that right is exercised and that the community understands, you know, what you need to do, what we need to do, what needs to be done, what, what kind of advice you need to give other people as it relates to exercising that right. So I'm just so happy to have us here. Okay, we're gonna start with uh, Darius. Tell us a little bit about yourself personally first. All right, well, good afternoon to everyone. I am Darius Maynard. I am the chairman of the Making Beer County Board of Elections. Uh, was appointed to this role back in March of 2021. So just a few short uh, months ago, uh, at the very first board meeting that I attended as a normal member, uh, they put me in the chairman's role. <laughs> <laughs> and so I had to, you know, go ahead and take my life lessons that I've gathered from uh, other organizations such as Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated that have taught me to uh, be a leader, uh, to lead meetings and uh, work with other people across the aisle that look different from me and those that look alike me as well, and to just get things done. And so for the last couple of months, I've been working alongside Janetta and her amazing team over to make it be a kind of board of elections to get educated on uh, the process, uh, learn the new process, and then implement and uh, carry out this uh, election that we have coming up in November. I'm a native of Macon Bibb County, uh, graduated from Westside High School, went on to the University of West Georgia to get my bachelor's in political science and minor in criminology. And now I'm working on my master's of public administration at the University of West Georgia as well, set to complete it next May. But I am glad to be here. Uh, we are glad that you are here too. I won't compete with you by mentioning Omega Sci-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> but they're doing a good job and they got a good brother in you, so thanks for all you do. Thank you. Uh, Janetta, uh, I got, I finally, uh, got uh, Darius' title right, which is the chairman of the Board of Elections, and we want to make sure that we, we do that. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, well, I'm Janetta Watson. I'm the supervisor for the Macon Bill County Board of Elections, and I have been the supervisor since 2013. 
and I'm proud to say that I was the first African American in this to hold this position here in uh, Macon Bill County, Georgia. And I um, just look forward to daily serving the Macon Bill County community in this capacity of being fair, impartial, and um, holding trans, um, oh Lord, transparent mm -hmm. elections. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, transparent elections and fairness and, and all of that good stuff. I yell from Cleveland, Ohio. I am a graduate of Jane Addams Business Career Center and ICM School of Business. And uh, I'm just happy to be, I got married and moved here to Macon. And I've been here since two, 2006. And all of the rumors we would hear about Southern uh, hospitality has totally been just that, Southern hospitality. And I've enjoyed uh, being here. Okay, so now while you're talking, Janetta, just give us a brief overview of the function of the Board of Elections. Okay, well, the Board of Elections function is to conduct voter registration and elections in Macon Bibb County. So we make sure that every uh, person that needs to be registered gets registered. And then we also place them in the district boundary line and in, and in a polling location um, that's set up with a legislative reapportionment or, or reapportionment. So we make sure that they get set up in the polling location and have the um, candidates and races and um, things that they need to vote in. We make sure that they are set up in the right boundaries. I mean, I know I've been over there several times to vote, so you, they can also come to your office, uh, uh, well, several places across the town to vote. So I know that you all uh, kind of handle that. Well, that, you know, the whole election process in this country has been very, very interesting. And that goes without saying. So, you know, our mission today, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and anybody else who can vote, and those who can't vote, they need to be familiar with the process because you might have to help grandma them understand what needs to be done in order to, to cast the ballot. And let me say this, let me say this, you know, they kind of prick everybody's interest. Politicians are elected and those elected individuals make policy and those policies affect us, they affect our livelihood, they affect our family, they affect our neighborhood. So it's important, it's important you know, for everybody who can and who are eligible to be familiar, not only familiar with that process, but also uh, exercise their right to vote. And that's why we're here today. That's why uh, Ms. Watson and Mr. Maynard are joining us today because, you know, we're just praying that this information is imparted to the community and that the community takes advantage of it. Okay, let's talk generally, one of you, about, um, you know, there have been several, and I know you can't do them all, but you can do as many as you know as it relates to the election laws and changes in the process, you know, of, of voting and the right to vote and early voting and advanced voting and absentee voting and all of that. You know, let's just talk about that because it's important. And I, I, I'm gonna say this again. You know, when you watch it, not only do you need to know this, but you know, you need to make yourself a committee of one to make sure that everybody that, that, that you know and everybody you come in contact with and everybody that you can come in contact with, you know, uh, is privy to this information because it's extremely important. And finally, Janelle and I sit up after this. Uh, too often, we complain about things that are going on in our community. Well, you know, you play a role in it because the individuals who make these policies are elected. So you need to play a role in making sure that you have played a role 
in the election of those individuals who are making those policies. So what can we expect, uh, Ms. Watson, on the horizon as it relates to uh, law changes? Okay, well, I know everyone's been hearing about Senate Bill 202. And Senate Bill 202 put a lot of uh, new legislation in place as far as uh, voting is concerned, and especially with the absentee and provisional balloting process. Um, early voting just started on Tuesday, and it goes through October 29th. And we're here at the Board of Elections taking early voters from 8.30 to 5.30, Monday through Friday. And Senate Bill 202 added two mandatory Saturday votings for any type of election where in the past it was only for elections that had federal candidates on the ballot, but now it's for any election. So we will be having voting on Saturday, October the 16th and Saturday, October the 23rd from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. at the Board of Elections office and at the Elaine Lucas Senior Center. The Elaine Lucas Senior Center is, all, is also open for advanced voting throughout the advanced voting period. And the Theron Ussery Recreation Center um, that we used last year for voting, it is closed due to construction. So that's why we're not having that um, site open for early voting. And also Senate Bill 202 put an expiration date on when uh, voters can submit an absentee ballot application in order to receive an, app an absentee ballot by mail. So the deadline to request an absentee ballot application, because they have to have an application before we can send a ballot, the deadline is October 22nd. And this is the okay. first time we've had an expiration date actually in, in legislation uh, put a deadline on when a voter can request an absentee ballot. And that deadline is October the 22nd. Okay, uh, Darius, what, what, what election is coming up? She's giving us those deadlines, but mm -hmm. what is it for? Yeah, so I've, I've gotten a lot of phone calls over the last couple of weeks and days um, about the November 2nd special election. Uh, unlike our ordinary elections that we're used to, an actual human being is not on the ballot here in Macon Bibb County. A person is not running for a particular office here. What we have on the ballot is a special question uh, known as the other local option sales tax or the OLOS. And that's uh, basically asking the community whether or not they approve a 1% sales tax increase on um, local services to, uh, to help support a rollback of property taxes and other things of that nature, um, which will be further deemed by the county government later on, which, if they have not already identified those things. Uh, so, like you mentioned earlier, every election is important. I've been voting since I was able to. I haven't missed an uh, election yet. If I was out of town at school, I did an absentee ballot, uh, made sure my vote was counted. Um, as I did an interview the other day, I said, I don't care if we were. Uh, electing the head dog catcher is still important. <laughs> it's still important because that person will create policy, as you said, or create rules to where, let's say, you know, I go pick up every dog on this side of town, but I won't pick up the dogs on that side of town. Yeah. So again, it's, it's important. Every election is important. And I can't express that enough. And so even though a human being, again, is not on the ballot in November, uh, it's still important for this community to get out and have their voices heard on this other local option sales tax question. That's outstanding. However, uh, I think it's equally as true, uh, Janetta, that, you know, this SB 202 just does not, does not just refer to this special election, that it's something that's going to regulate voting, you know, from now on, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it's important that we, we understand that. Uh, so from a general perspective, uh, Ms. Watson, Supervisor Watson, uh, you know, just 
to the best of your knowledge, you know, and I know that, that you know, I just found out that the thing is 65 pages. I mean, I <laughs> you sent me something, he printed all 65 of them. That's not <laughs> just just a but, bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I know it's a lot of information, but from a general perspective, what kind of adjustments or what kind of trends are being set in, in, in this new election? Uh, well, one of or quite a few of the trends that are going to be set is people, uh, the voting public will definitely need to know the rules and policies more so now than ever before, uh, especially as it pertains to deadlines and who can uh, give absentee ballot applications, who can return them, uh, when is the deadline to get things done, the, the uh, voter registration deadlines. Um, provisional balloting, who can have access to that, who is per given permission to get a provisional. All of these things have had rule changes and le legislative changes within Senate Bill 202 and the State Election Board is currently meeting, making amendments to Senate Bill 202 as we speak. So there are a lot of rules being put in place, a lot of policy and procedure being put in, put in place that affect the voter and the, op, uh, uh, the operation and administrations of elections offices. Oh yeah, and that, that's very, very important because what we don't want to happen, uh, I would think is that, you know, a person who normally or traditionally uh, votes, you know, assumes that you know the rules are the same or the processes are the same and other things are the same when they are different. So uh, Darius, how, how do you suggest one stays abreast of what's going on as it relates to these modifications in voting and voting laws? That's, that's a great question. Um, really, it's, it's being attuned to what's going on. Uh, being engaged in uh, civically in your local government, uh, going to commission meetings, going to community events and things of that nature, and just listening in uh, and attending these various meetings and events. Um, one thing I said when I when they threw me in the chairman's role was that um, we're we're gonna I call I call Commissioner Lucas Lang Lucas. I called her. And she says, very, it's a very easy job. All you have to do is follow the law. I said, okay, okay, that's, 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 that's more leveling for me. And so then we fast forward, by July 1st, you had Senate Bill 202 in place. And it's a law uh, that, you know, there's a lot of stuff in it that I just don't agree with. And the top portion probably being that, you know, the state can come over and take over your local elections for work. You know, they can send somebody down from the state to take over and run the elections. And this county and this community will have to pay that person's salary. Um, you know, we live here. This is our community. We know what goes on. We know what we need. We know how to do the things that we need to do. And so that is where I encourage everybody to stay abreast at what's going on. I mean, as Janetta mentioned, the State Elections Board uh, is meeting right now. Those are open meetings that uh, the general public can access and listen in on. Um, and we also have to remember that the government is made up of the people, by the people, for the people. And so if there's changes that we see, you know, there's nothing to get in, uh, collect, uh, uh, getting together in a collective numbers and uh, demanding or uh, advocating for that change. That's how you, that's how government works, you know, Government is going to continue to run the way that it's going to run if people um, aren't engaged or are participating in the things that are going on. So I encourage uh, everybody who is able to, to, even with this election coming up in November, get out and vote. Get out and let your voice be heard. Be engaged. Be civically engaged. Okay. And then, uh, uh, Supervisor Watson, uh, I'm sure because I get some of the information from uh, Ms. Maynard as it relates to trying to uh, keep the community uh, informed. But what if a person has a question? I mean, is 
Uh, do you all have the capability of taking calls and answering questions from the community? I'm not trying to bombard you, you know, I know there are a lot of them, but you know, something, you know, I just think, I just think that the community deserves, you know, the information so they can be informed, particularly when you got these major changes, this major legislation. And let me ask you something quickly though, Darius. Mm -hmm. um, so they've already approved the law where the state can come over and take over the local board of elections? Senate Bill 202 went into effect on July 1st of this year, of 2021. Uh, and that process has already started with Fulton County of uh, uh, the Atlanta area. So I don't know. I don't know what the outcome of that was. Janetta. I kind of stopped following myself. Mm -hmm. It got so dirty. <laughs> yeah. But yes, that's um, that's a uh, one of the components of Senate Bill 202. One of the many components. But again, um, here locally, we we, we got to follow the rule of the law. That's how we continue to move forward and ensure that, you know, they don't come here to be a county and take over. And so when you say for people to be knowledgeable of the rules and the law, that's very important. That's gonna help out our staffs. You know, we don't want you coming, we don't wanna turn you away after the deadline for uh, Senate, uh, for ballots to be turned back in. But the rule, the law is now that, you know, by this deadline it has to be in, and after that there's no more. That's what we have to follow. And so when you come, and you come after the deadline, understand that it's not us and the staff. You know, we have to follow the law. That's what we're going to do. But it's, it'll help if uh, the community is also in tune to what's going on as well. That's very, very good. So what's the best way besides the Alex Habersham's call to action? Center? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> for, 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 but questions to be answered because we may not answer everything. So what would be the resources, be it a, a, a website, a book, a, a, a phone call or whatever, can we just kind of uh, expose, you know, the community to some of the resources or pamphlet or what have you? to get the questions answered as it relates to all of these laws that are changing because, you know, let's just admit that it's going to be confusing to some people. Yeah, of course. Particularly since they've been following a pattern, but, you know, it is our hope and our prayer that everybody takes the initiative to become educated and to become familiar with these changes because we ought to be motivated to, to vote, yes. you know, and motivated to uh, whatever kind of obstacle, whatever kind of hurdle that's put in our way, we need to jump over it. And we also need to be motivated, everybody, to kind of assist people who may need help to exercise their God-given right to vote. So what would be some of the resources available for individuals who may have some questions or who may be a little confused, you know, but before you answer that, I want to do, and I'm sure Darius going to join with me, that whatever needs to be done, you know, we need to do it. We just can't be despondent and discouraged and dissuaded, if you please, from exercising our right to vote. So what, what are some of those uh, resources? No problem. Well, first, firstly, there are a lot of political groups out there that are disseminating information and they've been very helpful with making sure that the community uh, is aware of uh, many of these changes. And they are actually are calling in, getting the information. I have put together several PowerPoints uh, and been sending those out. And I think, uh, Mr. Habersham, you alluded to getting, <laughs> to getting <laughs> one that had a lot of information in it. So I'm putting that information as quickly as I can on our website, the Macon Bibb County Board of Elections website. And you just Google Macon Bibb County Board of Election and the information is there. You can all, they can always call into the Board of Elections office and get the information. The Secretary of State's website, sos.ga.gov, 
has a boatload of information. I don't even know where you know where to start on their website. And then there's the My Voter Page website. It's uh, myvoterpage.sos.ga.gov. Uh, and you can go on that website, you can register, you can find out where you're registered, you can change registration information, you can request an absentee ballot, you can check to see uh, where your ballot is in the processing process, and um, you can see your absentee ballot there. You can find out uh, voting information there. There's a whole lot. That is the most resourceful website for voters to go to, to get information and to uh, make uh, corrections and voter registration to uh, meet their voter registration needs, that the My Voter page. So there's a lot of information out there on the web. And, all of, and like I said, they can also get information uh, from us at our office. Okay, so it will behoove, in my opinion. Now, what was the, you, you, you sounded as if you uh, were emphasizing one website more than the other one that would be most inclusive. Say that one again. Is it, it my home page? Yes, it's the Secretary of State. They put the website together and it's called the Secretary of State My Voter Page or MVP acronym for short. Okay. And www.mvp.sos.ga.gov. Okay, okay, we'll scroll that on the stream. So let's do this, Darius. Let's encourage some organizations, you know, churches and fraternities and sororities and other organizations to to take a role in trying to help the, the Board of Elections to impart that information. So, you know, what I'm hearing is that uh, a facilitator could take that My Voters page uh, and show it up on the screen and kind of walk through it. Yes. Darius? Yep. Yep. Yes, sir. So what you think about that approach? I, I love that approach. That was actually what I was getting ready to mention. There's a lot of grassroots organizations. I mean, let's just be real about it. You know, uh, access to these resources, though they're there, you know, isn't equitable for everybody. Everybody can't access the internet. Everybody can't access Secretary of State's web office. You know, you can't just pick up the phone and get a person and get your question answered on every try. And so by us, you know, those of us who are civically engaged, uh, plus fraternities and sororities, uh, nonprofits, you know, churches, things of that nature, if they're able to get out into those communities, knock on those doors, do it by word of mouth and get that information disseminated and help those who can't access that information, we, you know, we'll be cooking with grease. Absolutely. Canola oil. I really do like that. I really do like that. And, you know, strangely enough, our time is up, but I want to express my deepest appreciation to Mr. Darius Maynard, who's the chairman of the Board of Elections for Macon Bibb County, and Ms. Janetta Watson, who's the supervisor for the Board of Elections. We will be scrolling those um, uh, URLs on the screen, and uh, you can hear them as uh, Janetta mentioned them. And also, those of you who want to encourage people to see this show, you can go to Alex Habersham YouTube. And, you know, we will put the show on YouTube and blast it out on our email blast. And while you're on our YouTube page, just go ahead and subscribe. And then you will be privy to this and all other information. This is a call to action. I'm your host, Alex Habersham. Don't forget, although Darius and uh, Jeanette and I are smiling, you know, this is dead serious. This is frown serious that we become familiar with this process and let nothing discourage us from voting. Get out the vote. I'm your host, Alex Habersham. Have a great day.